Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're doing great. I wanted to record this lesson in case I'm not able to do it live with you. Up on your screen you see right now a comment that I got from one of my students last semester. She said, my son taught me the basics with variables and then showed me a game he coded. I couldn't believe how much he used variables to switch up costumes and props. I'd like to learn to use and understand variables more. Well, <clears throat> this is a great comment and this is exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about variables, right? Variables are, before we get into the coding aspect of it, variables are actually a form of abstraction. Now when I say abstraction, I want you to stop and think for a minute, what do you think of when you hear this word abstraction? Look at the word, think about it for a minute. And what do you think the root of this word is? A lot of people when I say abstraction think of something like this, abstract art, right? But what about abstract art makes it abstract? What is it an abstraction of? The idea when you abstract something is you pull out the key details. So the idea behind abstraction is you want to see the forest for the trees. Sometimes we get lost in all the details. Those are the trees. We need to take a step back and see the big picture. That is what abstraction is. It's a way of seeing the big picture. It's a way of capturing the essence of something, right? So I want you to do an exercise for me right now. On your screen, you can see you've got here a whole bunch of something, right? If you were to use a single word to describe what you see here, what would that word be? You might be thinking fruit. And if you were to do something like that, you've now just created an abstraction of this whole scene. Fruit describes the big idea of what we're seeing. So think for a minute, when do we use abstractions in school? Well, we teach children that there's a beginning, a middle, and an end of a story. As they progress, we might teach them that there's a plot, there are characters, there's a setting. We're trying to help them see the main elements of story at different levels. The first level is a little bit even more abstract. We only give three things to describe a story. Later on, we get a little bit more detailed, but still an abstraction of what should be in a story. When we try to help students see the big picture in story problems in math, we're again trying to help them see the main idea, right? See the big picture. So let's talk about how this applies to coding. Well, there's this idea of a variable, and a variable is a type of abstraction in coding. So when I say variable, what do you think of? Well, you might be thinking of something like the x in these two equations here. So I've got this top equation, 4x plus 2 equals 14. Well, in that equation, what does x equal? What is the value of x? Well, you might look at that and you say, okay, I'm going to subtract 2 from each side. So now I've got 4x equals 12, and then I'm going to divide each side by 4 to get x on its own, and uh, you end up with x equals 3. In this case, x is just a placeholder for a number that we need to work out what the value is, right? The same is true with the equation below it. But what about this? This is what's called an expression. When you see this expression, what is x? Is it 3? It could be. Could it be 20? It could be. Could it be 100? Sure. Could it be a million? Absolutely. It could be 0. X is just a placeholder for some value, and that value can vary. That's why it's called a variable, right? Uh, the X is just a placeholder. In coding, we use this a lot. We don't call it x. It doesn't have to be called x. Uh, it could be called four times my number, right? Four times some multiplier. The idea here, though, is somebody has created a placeholder or a box for a single piece of information. And the value of that information can vary. So that's what a variable is, right? So let's go over this just real quickly, what we just talked about. Abstraction is the idea of where we want to focus on the big ideas. What are the core elements of something, right? A variable is a way of helping us do that in coding. It's a way of containing a single piece of information, but the value of that information can change, 
right? So we've got a value that we called x. It could be zero, it could be one, it could be two, and so on. It could be all sorts of different values. It could be a banana for all we care, right? But x is going to represent something else. It's a placeholder for a piece of information, right? So that's kind of the idea of what we're talking about. Uh, just before we get into the coding, I do want to remind you, you've got a debugging quiz coming up. That debugging quiz is auto-graded, so it takes people, last semester took people about seven, seven and a half minutes on average to take a debugging quiz. Uh, but if you don't like your score, you can retake it right away. So take it as many times as you like. Uh, the answers are randomly selected, or the questions are randomly selected from a pool of questions. So you may not get the same question when you take the quiz um, multiple times, and that's okay, right? The whole idea is to practice finding errors in code and seeing, can I figure out what the solution might be? Uh, the other thing, too, is uh, now that you've done your classroom introduction activity uh, and created your first full Scratch project, congratulations, by the way. The next Scratch project that you're going to have some time to work on is the classroom coding activity, where you get to create a lesson or something for a lesson that you might use in the class. Kind of like the types of things that you got to see when you did your Scratch exploration and you saw what other teachers are creating. Uh, we'll use we'll measure the complexity of that one instead of telling you to ha you have to have a loop or conditional. There's lots of ways of getting points for this one. There is a website online called drscratch.org. Uh, it was recently updated. Um, you go ahead and you put your project in drscratch.org, and it will give you a certain number of points for the amount, the different types of code that you used. So you can check the complexity. That's the same way that uh, we're going to check your complexity. That's how you get the most points out of the points that you can get on the classroom coding activity by going to drscratch.org and using that. So let's come back to uh, variables and how are we going to use variables in our code the way that uh, this student at the very beginning asked us to do it. Well, I'm going to show you right now one way that we might do that. So if you were to consider in here, um, I'm going to the wrong demo, here it is. So here's a, a demonstration from last semester. Here's what we want to create today. If I were to uh, click on the, it says click the green flag to practice addition, then follow the instructions to respond to Scratch Cat. Okay, this is the type of thing you might do a lot in a class. I'm gonna say, hello, what's your name? Okay, Peter, my name is Peter. <clears throat> Peter, let's practice addition. How many questions do you want to practice? Well, I want to practice, uh, let's say I want to practice three questions. What is two plus one? It's three. And notice when I get the answer correct, I played in a happy sound, and you can see my score increase by one. What is six plus nine? Well, six plus nine is 15. Same thing. I played a happy sound, my score increased by one again, so now my score is two. Well, let's get this one wrong and see what happens. 23. The cat just says nope. And then the cat tells me at the end, Peter, you got two out of three questions correct. I want you to look at this sentence that Scratch Cat is using and at the end. What part of this sentence could change depending on the way I played the game? What part of the sentence could change? Well, right here, the cat uses my name. If I typed in a different name, it would have said Bob or whatever that name was, right? Uh, and then the cat says, you got two out of three. Well, how does it know how many I got correct? Well, I was keeping track of them with my score. So that must be my score variable. That's a placeholder for score, this idea of score. And then three, well, I told it that I wanted to practice three total questions. So that's a placeholder for the total number of questions. The first is a placeholder for my name. So if I were to give these variables names, I don't think I would name them X, Y, and Z. That doesn't really tell me a lot about what should be contained by this variable. This first one, I probably would have called it something like name, right? And that tells me that this variable is a container for probably somebody's name, right? The same is true over here with this second variable over here. You got two, well, that's a score. I would call that my score. And you can see up top, that is what I called it. And out of three, that might be something like the total number of questions or something like that, right? So it's always good to name your variables something that makes sense to you. So let's, let's look at how we could make this ourselves. So um, I've started a project, I've named it, which is always a good idea to name your project right away. And I've put some basic instructions on here, just said click the green flag to take a math quiz, right? Super simple. If I look inside, I don't have any code yet, 
right? So let's plan it out. We always want to decompose our code and figure out what we want to do right away. So I'm going to put the general purpose up top. I'll say the purpose is to quiz, um, to practice, let's say, to practice single digit addition. So we'll just keep this super simple. We're just going to give single digits, let's say one through nine. I'm not even going to deal with zeros. We'll just say we want to generate a quiz that add, has people add two single digit numbers together, right? So how are we going to do this? Well, let's say, um, when I click the green flag, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to greet my student. After that, I'm going to, um, so let's say something like hello, and then I'm going to tell them, so I'll just say, let's practice addition. And then I'm going to ask them the question. So I'll say ask um, something like, how many questions do you want me to ask? So from there, I'm going to go ahead and answer the question. And we want the cat then to repeat the question however many number of times, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just put in here, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to take their answer, and I'm going to say repeat, let's say repeat, answer, let's go ahead and do this as all caps. So I know that this is something that could change. It's a variable, right? Repeat answer times. So whatever the answer is that they give me, if it's five, six, 12, I'm gonna ask the question about the math question here that many times. So here's what I'm gonna do each time that I repeat the question. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I need two random numbers, right? So I'm gonna say generate two random single digit numbers between one and nine. Great. So then I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask the student, what is, and I need to give names to these numbers because they could change, right? So the name needs to remain consistent, but the value can change. So uh, it's kind of like um, right here, my wallet is like a variable, right? My wallet is always called my wallet right? Um, I put it down. I forget where it's at. I ask my wife, hey, have you seen my wallet, right? Um, I pull my wallet out of my pocket all the time. Now, I might oh, look at my wallet and say, oh, hey, I've got $10 in here, right? So the name of my wallet is wallet, and the value is $10, right? So let's suppose I spend those $10. I give them away. Now, what do I have left in my wallet? Nothing, right? Well, did his wallet cease to exist just because the value is now zero? No, wallet is still called wallet, but the value of wallet has changed. I wanna do the same thing with these numbers. I'm gonna do something like, I'm gonna call this num1, and then I'll say, what is num1 plus, and then we'll call this uh, num2, okay? So I really want two of these wallets in this case, or variables, what I'm calling variables, um, that are going to, have some variable number value, right? Now, once the student, I've asked that student that question, uh, now what I'm gonna do is I need to check their answer. So I'll say check their answer. Um, so in checking their answer, I'll say 7a is going to be if their answer is correct, then I'm gonna do something like play a happy sound, increase the score by zero, by one, sorry. And um, play happy sound, increase the score by one, and say yes. Right? So that's the two ways of letting, three ways of letting the student know that they got the answer correct. But I'll say else if the answer is incorrect, then play a sad sound and say no. Nope. That's a little friendlier than no, I think. Uh, and I don't need to do anything to the score. I'm not going to decrease their score if they get it wrong. I just won't increase it, right? Now, when they're done doing all of these things, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the cat say that sentence that I showed you at the very beginning. So uh, when all the questions have been asked, um, I'm going to say something like, say, name, you got... 
and I'll say score, they got whatever their score was, out of uh, total questions. You can see in here, just like we looked at the beginning, I've kind of reserved these spots for whatever the value is at that time, and I put placeholders there, right? So that's what I mean when I say a variable is like a placeholder. It's just gonna be a named placeholder for a value that we're gonna hold on to, right? So uh, this is our, our plan. So let's go ahead and let's make this a little skinnier and let's actually make this thing happen. So I've got Scratch Cat here off to the side. I encourage you to follow along as you're doing this. As we start to code, if it gets too much for you, go ahead and just pause your video and get caught up with your own. If you need to slow it down, slow it down. If you need to replay it, replay it. That's the beauty of uh, asynchronous video, it's on demand. So let's say when I click, click the green flag, well, I go over to events and I grab when I click, and then I'm going to say, let's practice addition. So uh, I need to go back to my looks block and I'm gonna grab, actually first I need to greet my student, that's what I said I would do. Uh, so greet my student, hello, and then I'm gonna grab another say block and I'll say, let's practice addition and uh, then we're going to we already in one and two we're going to ask how many questions do you want so go down to sensing if you remember the ask is in sensing and ask um, instead of what's your name we'll change this to how many questions do you want me to ask okay now what we need to do, if you look in here, I need to repeat answer time. So whatever the answer is, they should give me some numeric answer to this, hopefully. Um, we can check that in just a little bit. Right now we're not gonna check that. But uh, we're gonna say, how many questions do you want me to ask? Well, I need to repeat however many times that they've answered me. So I'm gonna go to control, and if you remember, control has the blocks that control the flow of your code. Uh, so whether or not your code waits, whether it repeats, whether you ask conditions. So I'm gonna grab this repeat, and I'll say repeat not 10 times, but answer times. I'm gonna pull this answer over here and put it right in there. Now notice something about answer. Answer is a container for a piece of information. Whatever the user responded and typed in the box, that's the new value of answer, right? Uh, if I wanna track what answer is, you can see I can click on this checkbox right next to the to the left of answer and it appears on my screen. So right now it says answer is 13. So I must have typed 13 in here before when I was practicing, right? So I've got a, a 13 in here and it says repeat answer times. Now what I wanna do is I wanna generate two random single digit numbers between one and nine. Well, if you look over here in your code categories and you ask yourself, well, where would I find something that would generate a random number? Think about that for a minute. How can I get a random number? Well, over here in operators, this is where we find most of the things having to do with mathematics or arithmetic. Um, and we want this one right here. This fifth block down says pick random one through 10. I'm gonna pull that out and change that one through nine. And I could put it in here, but the problem is there's no place for it. This is a piece of information and we need a place to store that information. In this case, that means we need a variable. So if you look at the category right below operators, it's a variables category. But when I click on variables, you'll notice um, there's no blocks here, right? Instead of blocks like we see in these other categories, I go to variables and it just says make a variable or make a list. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button, make a variable, and I'm gonna name it something like num1, right? So this will be my first number, I'm gonna call it num1. And lo and behold, once I create that block, now I've got these four other blocks, right? I can set number to a certain value. I can change it by a certain value. I can show the variable, which makes it show up on screen, or I can hide it, which would hide it from the screen, right? In fact, just clicking on this check mark next to it shows and hides that variable. So I've got num1. I'm gonna pull out over here this very first block that says set num1 to zero. And now I can say set num1 to, and I can put that pick random right inside of there, right? So this will be my variable, and it's gonna be named num1. Well, I need to do, I need two numbers that way, so let's go ahead and do the same thing again. I'm gonna click on make a variable button. I'm gonna call this one num2. And uh, then I'm gonna pull out a set num1 block, but on the drop down, I'm gonna change num1 to num2. 
So now I've got a set num1 to pick random number. So let's right click on pick random and duplicate that. And now I've got a num1 that is some random number and num2 that is some other random number. You can see right now they're both zero, which means this hasn't run at all because it can't be selecting zero, right? Uh, we've coded a lot up to this point. We've actually gone um, all the way up through one through five, which is pretty awesome. It's a good idea when you're coding to not get so far down the road before you test your code, right? So let's go ahead and test this code and see if it works, right? I'm gonna go ahead and click the flag. The cat says, hello, let's practice addition. How many questions you wanna ask? Let's keep it simple, we'll keep it to four. And the cat doesn't ask a question yet because we didn't practice it, but you'll notice it did change the numbers. Num one is now nine and num two is five, right? Which is awesome, so it's doing everything that we told it to do. Uh, we haven't told it to do everything we want, so let's move on and, and do that, right? So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm on step six, I need to ask the student, what is num1 plus num2, right? So uh, the way that I can do that is, if you go to looks and you grab a say block, we're gonna say something, um, and we need to build a sentence. And if you remember, um, we used joins to do this before. So I'm gonna pull a join out where it says apple banana. I'm gonna put that right where the hello is. And instead of apple, I'm gonna say, what is, and put a space, and then where it says banana, I wanna put the first number, right? So what is num1, okay? The way I can do that is I can go to variables, and I can grab num1 from my variables and pull it right out here. So what is num1? Now num1, just asking what num1 is, that's not very helpful. Uh, the whole idea here is ask them what the sum of these two numbers is. So I'm gonna need another join, and go down to join, grab it, pull it out, put what we already put where it says apple. Now I'm just gonna put a space after the last word and a plus and another space. And I need another join. I'm gonna put this whole thing in the front. And instead of what is num1 plus banana, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to variables and grab num2. Great, so we've got our whole sentence here. So I'm gonna put this in here and we'll test this out. Cat says, hello, let's practice addition. I'm not even asking their name right now. How many questions do you want me to ask? Um, let's say something like, uh, I want to do three questions. Okay, the cat just says right away, what is two plus one? What's one plus three? What's two plus one? So each time it changed the value of that. I did notice a few things I think I wanna change. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna move this code so it's visible. There wasn't a question mark at the end of the question. So I'm gonna to go to operators and grab another join, put the whole thing inside where in the apple position and make sure there is a question mark at the end of that question. I wanna teach good, good uh, punctuation and good syntax after all, right? Now the other thing you'll notice is um, I did say the cat never asked our name, but at the end we wanna ask a name. So. Let's, uh, let's actually start off by asking the user their name. I had forgot to put that in there. <clears throat> so go to sensing, grab what's your name, right after we say hello. In fact, um, I'm gonna grab a join and a say. So let's go to say after we say what's their name. And we're gonna grab a join operator. And we'll say uh, something like hello, comma, space. And we wanna put name right where it says banana. So let's go to sensing and grab the answer because they just answered what their name was. So they typed that in. So the value of their name should be an answer, right? So I'm gonna say, hello, Peter, or hello, Bob, or whatever uh, this person's name is. Hello, Susie. Um, and then after that, the cat's gonna say, let's practice addition. Excuse me. Okay, so. Now, uh, you'll notice that the answer changes down here. So this answer up here is their name. This answer down here is the number of questions they want us to ask. Both of those things are the value of answer. So you can see the answer variable is changing pretty often, right? I started off right at the beginning. Uh, I put m my response in there about what my name was. But then when the ask, cat asks another question, I kind of throw up my name out of that box and I put a new value into the box. In this case, I'm putting the value of how many questions I wanna practice in total, right? Um, so then I repeat answer a number of times and I select, each time I do this, I select 
a random number between one and nine, and I set that to the num1 variable. And the same is true with num2. So I've got two variables here, num1 and num2, and I, I'm putting a random number between one and nine in there. And then I ask the question, well, what is the sum of these two numbers, right? Well, I've done everything up to uh, checking their answer. So let's go ahead and check their answer. I need to go to control and grab an if else. Now, if is always looking to evaluate a condition. What is the condition that we want to evaluate right now? Well, let's go back to our plan. And the plan is if, I can see where I wrote if, if their answer is correct. Oh, okay, so how do we know if their answer is correct? Well, we need to balance an equation here. We need to see, does answer equal what the sum of these two things is, right? Uh, num1 plus num2. So if you go to operators, there's an important operator here that you use a lot when you're looking at conditional logic, which is the equals. Uh, so I'm gonna grab that equals operator, and I'm gonna say, does something equal something else? Well, this is the answer to the question they just asked, or was just asked. So I'll say, does their answer equal? And now 50 doesn't make sense, right? What really needs to make sense is whatever the value is of these two single digit numbers, right? So does answer equal whatever they answered, right? Uh, in this case, I need to see if it is uh, the value of those two numbers. So I'm gonna go to operators and I'm gonna grab the plus operator. You notice it's waiting to sum two different values. So if I go to variables, which is underneath the operators category, and I pull out num1 and num2, now the cat is asking, does the user's answer equal the arith arithmetical uh, sum of these two values, right? If it does, then, well, like we said in here, I wanna uh, see if it's correct, I want to play a happy sound, increase the score by one and say yes, okay? Well, let's go get a happy sound. You'll notice up in the top left, we've got code, costumes and sounds. So I'm gonna get a new sound, and uh, actually I've already got this sound in here. It's a yay sound, let me play it for you. Ding, it's just a very nice sort of ding. And the no sound, kind of a little wacky, bink, but you know you didn't get it right, right? So in my code, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to sound, and I'm gonna gra grab play sound. I'll grab a start sound, and it says start sound. Let's see if this is good, then I'll put yay, right? The other thing I said I would do is uh, increase the score by one. Well, you'll notice I don't have a score up here right now. Where would the score block be, right? Well, there's nothing over here in the blocks that indicates there should be anything to do with like a game or a score or something. And if that's the case, then we are gonna have to make it ourselves, right? Well, score is just a piece of information. What do you use in coding to store a single piece of information? Hopefully at this point you're saying, I need a variable, right? So let's click on variables and go to make a variable. And the variable we're gonna make, let's just go ahead and call it score, right? We're gonna leave the for all sprites checked and click okay. Now I've got this score variable. I'm gonna drag that and put it in the upper right hand corner. I kinda of like to read that there. And um, I can say, well, if they've gotten it correct, then let's go ahead and change the score by one. So I'm pulling out the change uh, some variable by one. Right now, though, it's changing number one by one. That doesn't help us. So I need to select the score variable from that dropdown list, right? The other thing I said I would do is I said I would say something like yes or correct. I'll say correct, okay? So let's just test that much at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and play through this whole thing. Cat says hello. What's your name? My name would be Jacob. Cat says, hello, Jacob. Let's practice addition. How many questions do you want me to ask? Oh, I'll say I want the cat to answer, ask uh, five questions. Great, now the cat's asking, what is six plus two? And you can see up here, num one is three, and num two is three, I apologize. Uh, nine and, huh. So it just went through that and it didn't wait for my answer. Why didn't it wait for my answer? I think I know what's going on. Can you think for a minute? Uh, let's test this again. The cat says hello. Uh, what's your name? Okay, my name will be uh, Susie this time. Hello, Susie. Uh, let's practice addition. So the cat's going through here. How many questions do you want me to ask? I'll say four. What is nine plus eight? Okay, 
what's 6 plus 9, and what's 9 plus 5. Okay, so what's happening? Is the cat actually asking me this question, or is it just saying those things, right? Well, I used a say, and I said that whole sentence with a say, but I never gave the user a chance to answer. So I need to go to back to sensing and grab an ask block and grab this whole sentence and put it in there. And instead of saying something there, I actually want to um, ask it and wait for their response, right? So now when I click through, cat says, hello, what's your name? My name's going to be Heather. Cat says, hello, Heather. Let's practice addition. How many questions do you want me to ask? We'll say three. What's eight plus nine? And you'll notice now the uh, dialogue has popped up and it's waiting for me to answer before it goes on to asking the next question. So let's say 17. Now we did say if it gets it right, Right? If the answer equals num1 plus num2, which it should in this case, we should hear a sound, our score should go up by 1, and the cat should say correct. So let's try that. 17. Okay, the score did go up by 1. The cat did say correct, but moved really fast, right? So let's see, uh, 6 plus 2 is 8, so we'll say that is 8. And the cat said uh, correct really quickly, but maybe I need to say something like, say correct for two seconds so it's long enough for us to really see it. So I'll say correct for two seconds, grab the correct that isn't timed, and now when I do this I'm just gonna play it again. Cat says hello, what's your name? My name is Don. Hello Don. Let's practice addition. How many questions you want me to ask? I'll say I want uh, three questions. What is 8 plus 1? 9. It says correct. And that time it was long enough for us to see it. So I don't need a. If I just say <coughs> something and the code is going to continue doing things, it won't say it for very long before it moves on, right? So instead I want to say, say correct for two seconds. That way the, re the, the response from the computer is up at least long enough for people to do something with it, right? So what is 16 plus 9? I'll say 17. And 5 plus 6, I'll get this one wrong, and I'll say this is actually 12. Okay, so I got that one wrong. Now, notice something interesting about my score. It's 3. I just asked 3 questions, but I got one of them wrong. Why is my score 3? Think about that for a second. Well, the reason it's 3 is because I forgot to reset the score when I played the game again, right? And so that score variable was already at a one or two when I started playing this, and it increased, um, but it took into account the prior game, right? Well, that's not how I want this to work. I want it to reset every time. So it's really important at the very beginning of your code to set up your variables. So I'm gonna go grab another event, and I'm gonna use a green flag, and just like with Scratch Junior, I can do parallel coding. This is kinda like when we made the sprite go to diagonal. We did two things at the same time using the same uh, event. So I'm going to use this one green flag is clicked. Just put a comment on it, say set up variables, right? This way, if I need to reset my variables, I kind of have a place where I can do that. Now, this is called initialization code. It's used in all sorts of programming, right? So I'm going to go to variables and I'm just going to grab the set uh, score and I'm going to set that score to zero to begin with, right? So now you'll notice when I click on the green flag to play again, it resets the score to zero. Right, so what's my name? Johnny. <coughs> Excuse me. Cat says, let's practice addition. How many questions do you want me to ask? Four. What's five plus nine? 14. Correct. Uh, what's eight plus 17? I mean, nine is 17. Correct. Let's get the next two wrong. We'll say nine. And we're going to now say uh, six. So I got three of them right. Um, and my score, uh, or maybe we got four of them. I'm, what is my score for? Hmm. Did it increase at any point? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll have to think about that. Well, at this point, let's go on. We've done everything through 7a, which is if their answer is correct. But what if their answer is wrong? Well, I could check if it's wrong, but I kind of already have. Because this is a binary decision. Either they're correct or they're not correct. There's no middle ground here. And I already checked if they were correct. So if they weren't correct, then else means they were incorrect, right? So if they're incorrect, I'm just going to go grab a sound. 
I'll say start sound no. And I'm going to say something like nope. And I'll say it uh, for two seconds or something like that. So it stays up long enough for people to read it, right? So I'm going to click through this. Cat says, hello, what's your name? My name is George. Hello, George. Uh, let's practice addition. How many questions do you want me to ask? Four. What's the answer? Five plus three, eight. Okay, that's my first one correct. Six plus three is nine. Okay, that's my second one correct. Let's get this one wrong. We'll say it's nine again. And now we hear the cat go doom and it's nope, right? Two plus four, we'll say it's two. And the cat got that and said that that was wrong. And you can see the score only increased with the two correct answers. Well, at this point, I've done almost everything I wanted. I just haven't built this last sentence. I want to say, when all the questions have been asked, say name, you got score out of total questions. Okay, so let's go grab a say block. In fact, I like this say block to be the very last thing that sort of ends this game. So I'm just going to get a say, but not a timed say. And what I'm going to say here is going to require a lot of things in the sentence. So I'm going to grab a join. And the first thing I need is their answer. Uh, their name, I'm sorry. So where does name, where was name stored? Well, if you remember when we asked the name, we just used answer, but look how many times the answer since then has been reset, right? Every time we ask a question, answer gets reset. So what we needed is we, we need to hang on to name even while answer is not hanging on to it, right? So let's create our own variable for name. I'm going to go to variables and create a new variable. I'm going to call this one name. And now with name, I'm going to say, right after I ask their name, I'm going to say set name to the answer. Okay. Now I can still say hello answer because the answer should still be their name right after that. I haven't reset the answer or the answer variable, right? So now that name is stored in answer, I, in this sentence down here, I can actually go to variables and pull name and use that right at the beginning. So I'll say name comma, oops. Let's try that again. Comma, you got, well, what did they get? They got score out of the total questions, right? So let's go to operators so we can build this sentence. I'm going to go grab a join, put the first join inside the other one. And I'll say, you got, well, where's their answer? The number that got correct, stored. Well, if you go to variables, you can see we stored that in something called score, right? So you got score, and we need to say out of how many. So. We're going to go to operators and grab join and put the first one in there and we'll say space out of, well, did we ever store how many times they wanted to practice? Let's look up in our code. No, we just have them repeat answer, but then answer gets reset every time we ask a question. So we need to do the same thing that we did with name. We need to create our own variable. So we go to variable and we're going to make our own variable. And in this case, we'll say something like total questions. Okay, so now we have a variable called total questions that will indicate how many times we're going to ask the question. But I can also use that now in my sentence where I say something like, name, you got score out of, and I need another join. And I'm going to put those two together. You got score out of total questions. Uh, in fact, let's put another operator and say, um, let's grab joins. Put that join there and I'll say you got, you know, for example, four out of, you got four out of six total questions and I'll say correct. So it's kind of, it looks unwieldy with all of these joins together, but really it's kind of a simple sentence. Just saying their name and you got whatever your score is out of the total number correct. Okay. And uh, we want that said right at the very end. So we're going to put that in the hello. And now... When I play this game, I'm going to go through here, and the cat's going to say, what's your name? And you notice that's kind of being covered up by total questions. Let's go to variables, and all these variables are turned on right now. I want to leave the score on, but we don't really need to see anything else, right? Um, the answer is still showing up there because it's blue, and if I go to sensing, answer is tied to the ask block. And I can turn that on and off visibly as well. So if, uh, what I like to do is when I'm developing and making it, I like to show my variables on the screen so I can track what their values are. Sometimes I think they're one thing and they're something else, right? So instead, what we're going to do now is um, the cat says, what's your name? And 
Um, we're going to go ahead and give him our name. So my name will be Michael. And the cat says, hello, Michael. Look at the answer variable. The answer variable is now Michael, right? How many questions do you want me to ask? I'll say I want four questions. So I say four, but now look at the answer. The answer is now four. It's variable, right? But the name of the container for this information remains the same. So what's eight plus two? I have a score of zero right now, so if I answer this, I should have a score of one, and that's exactly what happened. What's six plus four? Let's say 10 again. <clears throat> and we'll say, oh man, nine plus four, I know this, I'm gonna roll. Okay, so that's 13. Nine plus two, let's say I type 10. Oh, that was not right, right? So it says, Michelle, you got three out of zero correct. Awesome, so they told me, oh, Michelle, ha, ah, Michael. But what I need to do is I need to put some spaces in here. So I could put Michael, or let's say comma, space, you got <clears throat> something, we'll say out of, looks like that one is working okay, I got some space in there. Out of total questions, correct. We'll put a space in there. So now when we replay this whole thing, cat says, hello, what's your name? That's gonna be my name, as if, as if. Let's practice addition. How many questions do you want me to ask? I'll just say three. What's five plus nine is 14. Great, got it right. Three plus seven is 10. Uh, okay, I got it right. We'll get this last one wrong. We'll say it's 123. And that's not correct. So now, you can see I have the sentence that Scratch Cat says, you got two out of zero correct. Well, obviously the total questions was never set because it shouldn't be zero. So let's go and look at that. I said, how many questions do you want me to ask? And look, I never put that in a variable. So let's hold on to that. Let's go to variables. We did have total questions here. So I need to grab a set block and put it right after the ask. Instead of setting name, I'm gonna to set total questions to, if you go to sensing, we'll say their answer, right? So how many questions do you want me to ask? We're gonna invisibly set this up before we go on to asking our questions. And now when a student uh, goes through and they play this whole thing through, it should hopefully tell us how many they got correct out of the total questions that they practice. So what's your name? My name is 45. It says, hello, 45. Let's practice addition. How many questions do you want me to ask for? What's seven plus four is 11. We got one correct. Five plus nine is 14. Another one correct. Let's get this one wrong. That's eight. Nope. Cat says that's not right. Six plus nine is 15. And just like that, we've answered these questions. Calls me by my name, which in this case was 45. You got three out of four correct. That's fantastic, right? That is how you use variables. And you can see all throughout here, the parts of this sentence that are changing, keeping track of the score, all of these things are containers for a single piece of information that might change, right? Um, one more thing, if you wanna, if you're still with me and you want to hang on, there's one more thing that I would do personally if I were teaching this, right? You'll notice, um, if I were to go ahead and play through this, it says, what's your name? I'll say Peter. Students will find ways to break your code, especially if they know that you made it yourself. So now the cat asks, how many questions do you want me to ask? I could say something like, um, Melissa. Okay, I want to ask, answer Melissa questions. Well, <clears throat> the cat doesn't know what to do with Melissa, so it just jumped, skipped this whole repeat block, and jumped down here to the say block where it says, Peter, you got zero out of Melissa correct. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so I'm gonna stop it, and instead of just repeating, I'm gonna use a repeat until block. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna go to control, and you'll notice you have the loops. We got repeat, and we got a forever loop. Then we have the conditions, the if and the if else condition, but then we've got some other blocks down here that we haven't used yet, and there's one called repeat until. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to keep asking the question until they are within a certain range. So I don't want the student saying they're going to practice a million questions or even a hundred questions, even 50. Let's say I want them to choose some number between three and 12, right? So I'm going to repeat until their answer is somewhere between three and 12. So I'm gonna grab all this stuff that's in my current repeat, put it in my repeat until, and now uh, it's looking for, let's take that say and put it at the bottom of that repeat until, we'll put that after that. And the repeat answer times, I'm gonna get this, 
and <clears throat> I'm going to um, keep asking the questions. How many questions do you want me to ask? Uh, until <clears throat> it's in between two certain values, right? So actually, uh, I'm going to undo some of these things. I think I kind of want this actually set up the way that I had it just a minute ago. There you go. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a repeat until and put the repeat until um, inside of this block, right? So we'll repeat until this. And once we know it's uh, done the way that we wanted to, we will set the total questions to their answer. So I need to repeat until, <clears throat> I need operators. I'm going to need an and operator. This is what's called a Boolean operator. And, or, and not are Boolean operators. I'm going to grab an and in here. What I'm going to say is repeat until um, their answer is greater than, so we'll say get, grab this, uh, inequality. So we're going to have the greater than, and we'll put the answer in here. We'll say their answer is greater than 2, and their answer if you go to operators, we'll grab the other inequality, and their answer is less than, let's say, 13. Actually, let's just have them practice no more than 10 at a time, so less than 11. And I do need to say their answer here, so I'm just going to right-click and duplicate. So we're going to repeat this question, how many questions do you want me to ask, until their answer is somewhere between these two values. Now, if a student types something like a string, like Peter, or... Josh, or a number that's way out there, like 50 or 100 questions I want to practice. <clears throat> the cat is just going to keep repeating the question until the answer gets in there. Now, I do like them if the answer is <clears throat> not in those things, in those values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, go to uh, control and grab an if block. And I'll say if this whole thing. So I'm going to right click and duplicate. If this whole condition wasn't met, right? So I don't really want to say if this condition, because that is going to be true. If you go to operators, this really cool operator and the Boolean is called not. So I'm going to pull out the not operator and pull the answer is less than, greater than 2 and less than 11. So that's between 2 and 11. If it's not that whole thing. Um, so if it's outside of those, then I, I'm going to, need to tell them, hey, um, I'm just going to say, um, please uh, choose a number between 3 and uh, 10, right? So now if I get this, uh, and I, I don't do what, I don't ask the number of questions correct, the cat will tell me how many I can practice. So let's try it again. Cat says, hello, what's your name? My name's Peter. Hello, Peter. You can see answers now, Peter. Let's practice addition. How many questions? Let's say I wanted to practice 100 questions. Cat says, please choose an hour between 3 and 10. Awesome. So I'll choose 2. Mm, nope, that doesn't work either. So let's be a smart aleck and choose a negative number. And the cat still says, please choose an hour between 3 and 10. So this is a great way, using this repeat until, is a great way to make sure that students are giving you answers that are within the ranges that you want. Um, so that then you can go on and do something reasonable. Right. So now if I say 5... Great, the cat understood. I now met that condition so they can go on to the rest of the code and they're going to repeat five times the question, right? So that is uh, our variables. I'm going to get this block of code and put it away. Don't need it anymore. So kind of clean my code up. I know this is a lot of code. So take your time to go over this. You're going to replay it if you want. Um, the whole idea here is to understand if I need a piece of information, I can hold on to that piece of information with a variable. We used in this case, if I go to variables, you can see we created five of our own variables. Name, num1, num2, score, and total questions. And we, hang, we, we hung on to their answers throughout the code, even while answer itself was changing values all throughout the code. We were able to come back to their name later on at the very end because we stored it in a variable at the very beginning. And then later when we needed it, we were able to go back to it and get that value. There's so much that you can do with variables. As you saw from that comment from my student at the beginning with her son, she was just blown away by how much he used variables. So see how you might use variables in your own code? <coughs> Excuse me. If you want to hang on to a value and you need to 
see if a certain value has been met. You need to come back to that later. If you're using a value multiple times, use a variable. Put that value into a variable, and then you'll be able to uh, make those comparisons in the way that you want to. So I know that was a lot. Um, go out there, see how you can use this with your own coding. And if you have any questions, come to TA Hours, uh, send the TAs or myself questions, and we'll get to answering those. Thanks, and happy coding.